Welcome, and thanks for joining me on this virtual flyover of the vanishing Great Salt Lake, made possible by imagery acquired by the Sentinel-2 satellite on July 9, 2022. I'm Tom Yulesman, and I direct the Center for Environmental Journalism at the University of Colorado Boulder. I'm also a columnist for Discover Magazine. My purpose here is to help us visualize just how much the Great Salt Lake has shrunk due to drought and overuse of water. It shrunk two-thirds in recent decades, revealing large expanses of former lake bed that is contaminated with toxic materials. You can see those large expanses of lake bed here in this photograph that I took on the south shore of the lake on July 9th. There are other problems as well. It causes problems for recreationalists. For example, people who want to launch their boats, but the water is really low, making it very difficult. This is the satellite image that I used to create the virtual flyover, and I have um, marked our route in red. We're going to start in the lower right-hand corner. Yeah, that's southeast of Salt Lake City in the mountains, and then we'll move out across some of the developed area of the city, then up the eastern shore of the Great Salt Lake. We'll turn around in the northern end and then head back south, actually southeast, um, across the waters of the lake. We'll cross over a giant tailings pile uh, from a mining operation. We'll talk about that in a few minutes, the source of some contamination to the lake, and then finish um, our tour. So these mountains that you see here are the high peaks of the Wasatch Range. One of them is Lone Peak, elevation 11,260 feet. It's one of the taller peaks along the Wasatch Front. These mountains are really important because they capture snow that blows in on winter storms from the west. As the snowpack builds up uh, it, and then melts out in the spring, it provides much of the region's water for municipal use, industry, and agricultural use. The problem, of course, is there's a lot of water being used now, but we're in the middle of a drought. We're moving to the northwest now, out over Salt Lake City. You can see that developed area, and there's some also uh, cloudy uh, areas, just a few clouds. We're coming upon um, an area uh, with a little blue that you might see. It's a little pond, and then a gray area. Um, that's a tailings pile uh, made from uh, mine waste um, that we'll see. We'll see the mine at the, toward the end, and I'll tell you a little bit more about this tailings pond in a few minutes. We're cruising up the eastern shore of the Great Salt Lake. And keep your eye on the, those whitish, grayish, tan areas. Much of that used to be covered by the lake. It's now exposed. These are exposed lake bed sediments. Contamination from human activities like mining um, has built up in the lake bed. And this includes copper, sulfur, silver, phosphorus, chlorine, molybdenum, zirconium, and lead. Also barium, magnesium, uranium, calcium, cobalt, selenium, zinc, antimony, lithium, and arsenic. So we're about to hit the north end of the lake. And again, you can see that exposed lake bed sediment. And this is a problem um, because scientists are worried that some of these contaminants could get picked up by high winds and then blown out over developed areas along the Wasatch Front, including Salt Lake City. A Utah Republican state lawmaker quoted in a New York Times story called this a potential environmental nuclear bomb. So we've pivoted to look to the south and now we're cruising out over the Great Salt Lake, cruising south, gonna go back to where we began, not quite the same spot, but close to it. Um, in just a moment or so, there'll be a little bit of a glitch. Uh, uh, there's just a technical problem. But again, keep your eye on that exposed lake bed. There is quite a bit of it. It gives you a sense of just how much the lake has shrunk over the years. There's that glitch. And now we're approaching the southern end of the lake. And you'll see um, that little blue pond and the big area of gray. That's the tailings pile I mentioned. Um, it's bigger than half the size of Manhattan, and those tailings is mining waste. It consists of mining waste from this mine that you're about to see in the mountains south of the lake. 
Kennecott has mined copper and other materials here for decades. Much of the material dug out of the mountain winds up in that gigantic tailings pile. And the area immediately north of the tailings pile, scientists have found copper, molybdenum, and sulfur. So we're going to transition now to a view from the ground. This is at the site of the famous Salt Air Resort. It's now a concert venue. The building is actually behind where I took the photo. But where the fence ends here, there used to be water. People bathed here. Now the lake has receded so much, there's just this vast expanse of lake bed, exposed lake bed sediment. You can see a thin blue line of the lake in the distance. So thank you for joining me. I appreciate it. If you want more information, please click on the link below to a story I've written for Discover Magazine. And again, thank you so much.